This tutorial is going to consist of four parts. First, I'm going to give you a brief Bluetooth Low Energy overview, and then we're going to briefly go over four apps that all perform different functions. Two important aspects of Bluetooth Low Energy are the gap and gap. The gap handles connections between devices. The GAT handles data transfer between devices, which consists of reading and writing to characteristics as well as notifications and indications. On the GAP side of things, you have your masters and slaves. On the GAT side of things, you have your clients and servers. Servers commonly hold the data of interest, where clients display and or do some function on the data. This is the general connection topology. As you can see, a GAP central device can connect to many peripherals, whereas a peripheral can only connect to one central device at a time. This diagram shows the GAT interactions between the server and client. This is a very generalized view that gives an idea of how clients and servers interact. To wrap up this brief overview, we see that a profile is just a collection of services, and services generally consist of characteristics. In part two, we are going to read a characteristic value. Normally, this is done for polling, where you are trying to read a specific characteristic value on command. As an example, imagine you have a heart rate monitor, and you only wanted to read your heart rate after every lap that you ran. So to do that, you would manually go and read your heart rate. Now, let me show you how we do this in Qt. So here's my code in Qt. I'm not going to go through all of the QML code, because at this point, you should already have a working knowledge of QML. And in this tutorial, I'm not going to go line by line throughout my whole C++ code, because I am using the same code from the last tutorials as a base, and I'm just adding code to show you what you need to do in order to read a specific characteristic. And to give you a general overview on how to go about reading a characteristic, for this tutorial, we're going to be changing some code in device.cpp in our connected service function. To properly display the fact that we are indeed reading a characteristic, what I did here was read the current value of the characteristic, then write a new value to the characteristic, then we will read the new value of the characteristic, which is meant to confirm that we are indeed reading the characteristic value. In order to read or write to characteristics, we have to be in the service discovered state. And side note, don't forget to go to the Q Bluetooth UUID header file and add the UUID for your custom characteristic. As you can see, I put a label on my characteristic as mine, which corresponds to my characteristic UUID of AB11. For starters, we want to create an instance of the characteristic that we're looking for. That's what const kilo energy characteristic link line is doing. It is creating an instance of the characteristic with UUID mine. And I am just now realizing that I called read characteristic twice. That's not necessary. You only need to call it once. So if we are in the service discovered state like we need to be, then we read the characteristic, write a new value to the characteristic, which in this case I'm writing to it the value of checker, which is 1. And then we're passing the read characteristic value from the C to the QML with the read data signal which triggers a slot in QML that changes some text in order to display our value. As you can see, reading a characteristic is pretty straightforward given the Qt APIs. All of the files that I use in this tutorial will be available to you. This is basically everything that you need to know to be able to read a characteristic. To change the characteristic that you want to read, all you have to do is go to the characteristic UUID and change it to whatever your characteristic UUID is, as previously shown. For this tutorial, I used the same characteristic UUID as the last Bluetooth tutorials, and I just labeled it mine. So if you right-click on mine, go to Find Usages, you'll see a Q Bluetooth header file. Go there and add your characteristic to the list of characteristics, along with your custom UUID. To conclude this part of the tutorial, I'm going to deploy and run the app alongside my BLE Pioneer kit. So these are our two devices. We have the PSOC BLE kit here acting as a server and the slave. And we have the iOS device acting as a client and the master. This is the app provided to you for reading the characteristic. We're going to start off by scanning. 
As you can see, we found the device we're looking for. So we're going to press the UUID to connect. We're connecting, and now we found the service UUID. And we're going to press to discover the details of the service. Now we're going to press to read and then to write. This is utilizing the code that was went over in the tutorial where you're reading and then writing. So as you can see, the characteristic value was zero. And then we're going to press to read the new value because we read the characteristic and then wrote the characteristic. So now we're going to read it again and we should get a one here. As you can see, we have a characteristic value of one to show that we are actually reading the characteristic. For part three, we're going to be writing to a characteristic, which is useful whenever the client needs to send data to the server. In order to write to a characteristic, we again have to go to device.cpp and look for function connect to service. And this is the code that writes the characteristic. As you can see, again, we're creating a QLO energy characteristic instance following the same procedure that we did for reading. I'm writing to the same characteristic as we used before. And to write to your own characteristic, define it in Q Bluetooth UUID.h. It's not absolutely necessary. You could hard code it if that's your preference. And again, to read or write to a characteristic, you have to be in the service discovered state. So you call write characteristic, and then you specify the characteristic that you want to write to. You specify the value that you want to write to it, and you choose write with response or write without response. And for displaying purposes on the app, I just pass in the value that we're writing to the characteristic from this signal to a slot that will change text in the QML file. This is all for the QT side of writing to a characteristic. Now we have to configure the PSOC side. Now go to your custom characteristic and make sure you have the right box clicked and make sure that your UUIDs match up. For verification purposes, I put LEDs. Now in the file provided, go to main, write request parameter, that's going to handle the write request. If the handle of the characteristic that you are trying to write to matches the handle of your custom characteristic, then we enter the if statement. What to do is a uint8 variable that will hold the written value of the characteristic. We pass what to do to our update characteristic function and then we set the started flag. And then we respond with the connection handle. The update characteristic function updates the characteristic. And for your own purposes, you can control the length of the value of the characteristic by changing the value.len. It's sent to uint8, so if you put 2, it's going to be 16 bits. If you put 3, it's going to be 24 bits, and so on. Now in the main function, we're saying that if device is connected, which is a flag that is set when the device is connected through the gap layer, and if the started flag is set, then we turn on one of the three LEDs based on the what to do value, which is again the variable holding the value written to the characteristic. Now I'm going to deploy and run the app on my phone. So here we have our two devices, the PSOC 4 BLE Pioneer Kit, and our phone. And here's our writing to a characteristic app. Now for starters, we're going to find our device. Here's our device. We're going to press the UUID to connect. Okay, and as you can see, we found the service. Now we're going to press to discover service details. Okay, now service details are discovered. We're going to press again to write to the characteristic. And we're going to write a 3. And we should see the LED here light up. And so I chose to write a 3. But if you were to write a 1 or a 2, it, the corresponding red or blue LED that lights. So that's writing to a characteristic. Now we are going to go over notifications. Notifications are used when the server needs to send data to the client without the client requesting you. For notifications, we continue the trend of going to device.cpp and finding the connect to service function. Here, we're going to create a QLO energy characteristic instance called link, just as we did for reading and writing. And we're going to follow the same process so that link 
is corresponding to our custom characteristic. When you turn notifications on for your PSOC device, you'll see that you get a client characteristic configuration descriptor. If you were to uncheck the notify box, that descriptor would go away. So as you can see, notifications are initially disabled. So what we are doing in Qt is writing to that characteristic descriptor, which in turn enables notifications. Going back to Qt Creator, we create an instance of a descriptor labeled M Notification Desk, which we set as the descriptor of our link characteristic, which is our custom characteristic. And we explicitly declare that the descriptor is a client characteristic configuration descriptor. And if notifications are set in the PSOC device, we know that we will have a client characteristic configuration descriptor. So that brings us to the if statement. If we do have a client characteristic configuration descriptor and it's valid, we write to it. 0100 corresponds to writing a 1 to the descriptor, which will enable the notifications. After enabling notifications, we are going to connect the signal characteristic changed to our slot update value. The signal characteristic changed is provided by Qt Creator and it emits a signal every single time the value of the characteristic is changed. Update value is a slot that we have to define ourselves. In order to define update value, first we go to device.h, put the prototype in private slots, and we're going to be passing in a certain characteristic and a certain value. If the UUID for the characteristic passed through is not the same as our custom characteristic, then we just return. If it is, then we store and display the new value. To make this work for your own needs, just replace my custom characteristic UUID with your own custom characteristic UUID and enable notifications on one of your predefined triggers. Now in PSOC Creator, you're going to want to go to main.c. Go up to the top and add these function prototypes. Handle random data, custom event handler, send data over notification, and update notification ccd. We're also going to have a bunch of flags. Device connected and restart advertisement are going to be used for connecting purposes. Start notification and update notification ccc attribute are both used for notifications. So first, in our custom event handler, we're going to have the write request parameter, which handles any write requests. And of course, on a get disconnect, we're going to reset all of our flags. Now in the case of a write request, we're going to do the same thing that we did before, except for we say that if we're trying to write to the client characteristic configuration descriptor, then we set the start notification flag equal to 1, and then we update the notification CCD. Updating the notification CCD, it's where you're actually writing a 1 as the value that in turn enables notifications. Now going back to main, if the device is connected, then we update the notification CCD, <clears throat> and if the start notification flag is set, then we end that with a bitwise operator, then we handle random data. The start notification flag is set when we write a 1 to the client characteristic configuration descriptor in the case of a write request in our custom event handler function. Our handle random data function is a function that handles the data that we're passing from one device to another. For your own purposes, that's a function that you would change in order to send your own data. For instance, you would send accelerometer orientation data or any other data of interest. Handle random data doesn't actually do the sending of the data itself. It just handles the data that you are going to send. The send data over notification is the function that updates the value of the characteristic. Make sure to call the CYBLE GATS notification function that's available. Send data over notification function is what triggers the characteristic changed signal in Qt Creator. Now I'm going to deploy and run the Qt app on my phone. So here are our two devices, our PSOC 4 BLE Pioneer Kit and our phone. This is the notifications app that is provided to you.
I'm going to press the scan. As you can see, we found our device. We're going to press to connect. And here you see we have our service UUID. Now we're going to press to discover the details of the service. And then we're going to press again to enable notifications. For demonstration purposes, I have it set such that when I enable notifications, it should go 0, 2, 4, and stop. There you go. Now, indications are almost identical to notifications, with the only real difference being that the client has to acknowledge the fact that it just received data. Whereas in notifications, the server pushes data without any acknowledgement from the client. This setup is exactly the same as notifications, except for on the PSOC side, check the indications boxes instead of the notifications boxes. I am providing example code for both the PSOC and Qt Creator. To configure the code for your own needs, follow the same steps that you did for notifications. That's going to wrap up this tutorial.